May Allah's peace and blessings be on you. O oh, my dear friends, I will present before you a subject of great significance. For thousands of years, messengers of God, philosophers, and preachers have warned their civilizations about the coming of the last day. They spoke about the life after death. Several explanations and interpretations existed, and they still exist in the human society. However, in this presentation, we're describing the Islamic position on the subject. According to Islam, the last day is the day when all the present creations, visible or invisible, will be terminated by the command of Allah. The creations include human beings, animals, creatures, planets, suns, moons, stars, galaxies, angels, solar systems, and the entire universe, and whatever exists in the universe. However, this event is followed by resurrection, new creation, judgment, and eternal life, either in paradise or in hell. All these events occur in a specified sequence as per the Noble Quran. As a matter of generality, these events are usually integrated as a single event known as the Last Day or the Day of Judgment. The Last Day is also known as the Hour. Islam emphasizes the fact that there is life after death. Life continues in different dimensions through eternity. Earth is not our home. The home in the hereafter is our final home, as stated in the Noble Quran. What is the life of this world but amusement and play? But verily the home in the hereafter, that is life indeed, if they but knew. What is the Holy Quran? The Holy Quran is a compilation of the revelations from Allah. These revelations or statements of Allah were sent to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, through the angel Gabriel in the Arabic language. The intent of the Holy Quran is to provide guidance to all mankind so that man leads a life on this earth for the pleasure of Allah. The Holy Quran is the final revelation for mankind till the last day. This is the only holy book which has been preserved to the original letter. The sequences of the statements known as ayahs were prescribed by Allah through the angel Gabriel, and the sequences have not been changed. The translations of this book are available in all known languages of the world. Who is Allah? Allah is the Islamic name for God. This name comes from the Noble Quran. Allah is the creator, sustainer, and cherisher of the entire universe and everything in it, known and unknown, visible or invisible. The most important belief in Islam is the oneness of Allah. He is one, but he is not alone. He has trillions of his creations with him. He has no partners, no family, and there is none like him. It is impossible to imagine what he looks like. It is stated in the Quran, no vision can grasp him. Allah is the most compassionate, the most merciful, and the most forgiving. He is the best and the perfect judge. However, his punishment could be quite severe. Allah does not come to this earth in the form of a human or any other form. This is the reason idol worship is not allowed in Islam. Worshipping idols or believing in partners to Allah is falsehood and the greatest sin which will not be forgiven. To provide guidance to human beings, he has sent human messengers to every group of people on earth from time to time. Through these messengers, he has instructed them what is good and what is evil. He has given man the power to choose between the good and the evil. Some of his messengers mentioned in the Noble Quran are Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and of course Muhammad, peace be upon all of them. He sent thousands of messengers and Muhammad was the last messenger, peace be upon him. He is present everywhere, east or west, throughout the universe at the same time. He says, and verily we shall recount their whole story with knowledge, for we were never absent at any time or place. The Noble Quran, Surah 7, Ayah 7. He gives life and death. We all have to return to him after we fulfill our term on earth. There are 99 attributes of Allah in the Noble Quran. Let us ask for his forgiveness all the time. Belief. 
Belief in the day of judgment is an article of faith in Islam. If a Muslim does not believe or has doubts about the day of judgment, it is far from being a Muslim. He must believe in paradise and hell. He must believe in life hereafter, which is eternal. On the planet Earth, we are on a test program. Allah wants to see how well we obey his commands. If we pass, he has great rewards for us. If we fail this test, he has punishments for us. However, if we repent sincerely, he may forgive us. He is the most forgiving. There are people in this world who prosper through evil deeds. There are people who suffer in this world even though they are righteous. There are those who are partially punished or rewarded for their respective deeds. It is on the day of judgment full justice is done to everyone and full recompense is paid. The Noble Quran, Surah 3, Ayah 185. Every soul shall have a taste of death, and only on the day of judgment shall you be paid your full recompense. Only he who is saved far from the fire and admitted to paradise will have attained the object of life. For the life of this world is but goods and chattels of deception. The Life Sequence Design of a Human Being The human being has a body and a soul. The body can be seen, the soul cannot be seen. Allah has prescribed milestones in the life of human beings. We have no power to delete or change the milestones or their sequence. The first milestone is the birth of the human being. We are created from the constituents of this planet Earth. Our survival is entirely dependent upon the earthly environments, like food, oxygen, and so on. The term of human life is decreed by Allah. All our deeds from birth to death are continuously recorded by angels. This file will be played back to us, like a video, on the Day of Judgment for acknowledgement. The next milestone is death. The time of death is known to Allah only. At the time of death, the angel of death takes the soul away from the body. The person has the last chance to repent before the soul is taken away. After the soul is gone from the body, the body stops its functions and is pronounced dead. The dead body is put into the grave. The angels come down to question the person about his or her beliefs. If the person passes the test, a view of paradise is shown. If the person does not pass the test, a view of hell is shown. But the soul cannot come back to the earth dimensions. The soul of the dead will not be able to communicate with the living people on the earth. The soul will not be able to take a rebirth in the form of a human being or an animal. Reincarnation is rejected in Islam. The souls of the dead are not admitted to paradise or hell. They have to wait till the last day for formal judgment by Allah. This is known as the waiting period. However, there is no waiting period for the martyrs. When a person dies as a martyr, he or she is admitted to the eternal life in paradise immediately. They do not have to wait for the day of judgment. The bodies and graves finally decompose and dissolve in the mud. Those cremated or those who have drowned experience the same results as above. The dead face the barrier of death behind them. They are isolated from the dimensions of this world. They face another partition known as Burzak ahead of them. They cannot proceed further. The sinners and rejecters of faith at the time of death feel the agony of their sins and want to come back to earth and perform good deeds, but they are not allowed. The Noble Quran, Surah 23, Ayahs 99 and 100. In falsehood will they be until when death comes to one of them, he says, O oh my Lord, send me back to life, in order that I may work righteousness in the things I neglected. By no means, it is but a word, he says. Before them is a partition till the day they are raised up. The dead cannot hear the living people, and they do not know what is going on in the world. However, the soul can meet the soul of the living person in their sleep. When the person sleeps, the soul is taken out temporarily and then put back when the person wakes up. Noble Quran states this. 
The waiting period can be very long, based on Earth's time scale. It may be thousands of years or millions of years. However, the time scale in the world of the dead is highly compressed. Each day that passes by, the last day approaches closer and closer. Hence, our generation is closer to the last day than the previous generations. The last day may not occur during our lifetime, but it is sure to come. There will occur a few events in the world which will signal the fast approaching last day. However, the exact date and time of the last day is known to Allah only. It will happen suddenly. The Hadith explains that the human society will acquire certain characteristics which will be indicative of the fact that the last day is not far on the Earth's time scale. Hadith 81, Sahih al-Bukhari. Said Anas, may Allah be pleased with him, I will narrate to you a hadith, and none other than I will tell you about after it. I heard Allah's messenger, peace be upon him, saying, From among the portents of the hour are the following. 1. Religious knowledge will decrease by the death of religious learned men. 2. Religious ignorance will prevail. 3. There will be prevalence of open, illegal sexual intercourse. 4. Women will increase in number, and men will decrease in number so much, so that fifty women will be looked after by one man. What is Hadith? Hadith is the name given to the sayings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The Holy Quran is the word of Allah, whereas Hadith is the word of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It should be noted that the Hadiths do not contradict the Holy Quran. Both the Quran and the Hadith are in the Arabic language. However, the Arabic of the Quran is of a glorious standard which has not been matched by any human being. The Hadith and the Quran can be easily distinguished. The Hadith being the language spoken by a human being, Hadith is part of Sunnah. The Sunnah also includes all the actions taken by the Prophet along with his silence on certain matters. Thousands of companions of the Prophet remembered the sayings of the Prophet at various occasions. After the Prophet passed away, the leaders of Islam compiled the Quran first, and then they collected the Hadiths. The most authentic Hadiths are supplied by the following compilers. Al-Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, Tirmizi, Anasai, Ahmed ibn Humble, ibn Majah, Hadiths emphasize and explain what the Noble Quran has stated. For example, the details of prayers, Hajj, etc., are stated in the Hadith. Hadiths also narrate subjects on which the Quran is silent. For example, the Quran is silent on the subject of music. The Hadiths narrate the Islamic position on this subject and so on. It is essential for a Muslim to believe in Sunnah, which includes the authentic Hadiths. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, stated that there will be ten events in the world before the last day strikes as per hadiths in Sahih Muslim. Number one, the arrival of Dajjal, who is also known as the Antichrist. He will spread corruption, oppression, and wrong religion. He will have 70,000 followers. Two, Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, will descend. Three, Yajuj Majuj, also known as Gog and Magog, will be released. They will destroy everything in their path to conquer the world. They will be in two groups. They will finally die through infections. This will happen during the life of Jesus, who will turn everyone to Islam. There will be peace and tranquility on earth. 4. There will be an eclipse in the east. 5. There will be an eclipse in the west. 6. There will be an eclipse in Arabia. 7. Smoke will cover the skies. 8. The sun will rise from the west. Some scholars state that the earth will slow down its revolutions such that each night will be a long night before the sun rises from the west. 9. A beast will suddenly emerge from the earth, causing a split in the ground. He will talk to the people. This is stated in the Holy Quran. 10. A huge fire will start from Yemen. Let us study a hadith about the return of Jesus, peace be upon him, as a sign of the fast approaching last day. Hadith, Sahih al-Bukhari, number 657, volume 4. Narrated Abu Harara, may Allah be pleased with him, 
Allah's apostle, peace be upon him, said, By him in whose hands my soul is, surely Jesus, the son of Mary, will soon descend among you as a just ruler. He will break the cross and kill the pigs, and there will be no jizya, taxation from non-Muslims. Money will be in abundance so that nobody will accept it, and a single prostration to Allah in prayer will be better than the whole world and whatever is in it. Abu Harara added, If you wish, you can recite this verse of the holy book. And there is none of the people of the scriptures, Jews and Christians, but must believe in him, Jesus as an apostle of Allah and a human being. Before his death and on the day of judgment, he will be a witness against them. Notice the word descend in the hadith. This means no rebirth through the womb of the mother, no childhood and no adulthood. Jesus will descend from the heavens on earth. This is confirmed by a hadith, 2137, from Sahih Muslim. Allah would send Christ, son of Mary, and he will descend at the white minaret in the eastern side of Damascus. In another hadith, Jerusalem has been mentioned, wearing two garments lightly dyed with saffron and placing his hands on the wings of two angels. Jesus will kill the Antichrist, Dajjal, at a gate of Jerusalem. The Antichrist has been very well described in the hadiths. The Antichrist's left eye will be blind, and his right eye will float like a grape. His complexion will be red. The word kafir will be inscribed on his forehead. He will not be able to enter Medina. Medina will rock thrice on his appearance. He would kill a pious man and then bring him back to life. He will spread the wrong religion. The prophet Jesus will destroy Gog and Magog. Then Jesus will establish the fact that he is a messenger of Allah and not his son. He will reestablish righteousness in the society. He will reaffirm Islam as the final religion of Allah. Muhammad being his last messenger, then Jesus, peace be upon him, will go through natural death of a human being, thereby completing the life sequence design of a human being. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was sleeping one night in Mecca when the angel Gabriel woke him up and took him to Jerusalem at the site of the Dome of the Rock on a high-speed animal called Burak. His travel was almost instant. From the Dome of the Rock he was ascended to the heavens and then was descended back to the same place, Dome of the Rock. He was then returned to Mecca. This event is known as Isra and Mirage in Islam and has been mentioned in the Holy Quran. For details of this event, refer to Quran and Hadiths. Our point here is, why was he not taken directly from Mecca to the heavens? And why was he not returned to Mecca from the heavens without going through Jerusalem? Is Jerusalem a station of ascent and descent? Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, was also raised up from Jerusalem and will descend in the same area. On the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem, there is a small round building as a monument from where Prophet Jesus was raised up. Jerusalem seems like a station where the doors to heavens are located. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said that the day of judgment will occur in Jerusalem. Time Dimensions Time, Time, Time In Islam, time is a creation of Allah and is relative. Allah has been warning the people of this planet about the arrival of the last day through all his prophets. Many of his prophets faced problems with their people when the last day did not arrive during their lifetime. There was a doubt about its validity. The last message about this subject came to us more than 1400 years ago from Allah through Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that the last hour which is so near draws ever nearer. Holy Quran, Surah 53, Ayah 57. The question arises in our minds why it is taking such a long time for the last day to arrive. Thousands of years have passed by, but the last day has still not arrived. In this century, man's knowledge of time dimensions has advanced so high that we can explain why it is taking so long for the last day to occur. Let us study the following ayah from the Holy Quran. Surah 22, Ayah 47. Verily, a day in the sight of your Lord is like a thousand years of your reckoning. Surah 70, Ayah 4. 
the angels and the Spirit ascend unto him in a day whose range is fifty thousand years. Sura 70, Ayah 6. They see the day indeed as a far-off event. Sura 70, Ayah 7. But we see it quite near. From the above statements in the Holy Quran, it is obvious that two frames of time are being hinted. One is the time frame of this world in which we live, and the other is his time frame, what we would call a thousand years, maybe nothing more than a day or a minute to him. Time to him is nothing. He encompasses the entire universe at the same time, even though the galaxies, stars, and planets are enormous distances apart. What seems a long time to us would be an extremely short interval of time, or timeless time, for him. On the Earth's time scale, the prophets and messengers of Allah delivered the message of the coming last day for thousands and thousands of years. However, for Allah, this time may mean to be a very short time. Once we understand that two frames of time exist, then we are able to answer the question why it is taking a long time for the last day to arrive. Some people explain that Allah says the day of judgment is coming soon because he does not want to delay our righteous work. Of course, Allah, through his mercy, is instructing us for a righteous work. However, in that process, he does not manipulate statements. He tells the truth. When he says that the day is nearer, this is a true statement, and the day of judgment is definitely near. On his time scale, he sees it near. The relativity of time has been very well illustrated in the following ayahs of the Noble Quran. Ayah 112. He will say, What number of years did you stay on earth? 113. They will say, We stayed a day or part of a day, but ask those who keep account. 114. He will say, You stayed not but a little, if you had only known. In 112, note that the words number of years imply the earth time. On the earth, thirteen orbits of moon around the earth are counted as one year. In Ayah 113, note the words a day or part of a day imply the same number of years now appear to be a short duration, like a day or a fraction of a day, on the time scale of the hereafter. When a person lives to be eighty or ninety years, we think he or she had a long life. But this is not true. Ninety years of age is almost nothing on the time scale of life sequence designed for us by Allah the Almighty. This is the reality. Death simply opens the door to the life hereafter, where time will appear as almost nothing. The people who have been dead in their graves for hundreds of thousands of years will be raised on the day of resurrection, and they will feel they were in graves only for a night. This fact has been revealed in the Noble Quran. The day they see it, it will be as if they had tarried but a single evening, or at most till the following morn. The Recording System Computers have become the backbone of the society today. They receive the information, record them in a memory bank, and play them back on the screen or print them on the printer. This concept has been pointed out in the Holy Quran 1400 years ago. Do you know that we are being recorded continuously from the time of our birth to the time of our death? The subject of the recording system designed by Allah is an extremely important subject in the process of understanding the last day or the day of judgment. Data Acquisition Surah 82, Ayah 10 But verily over you are appointed angels to protect you. 11. Kind and honorable, writing down your deeds. 12. They know and understand all that you do. Our thoughts, motives, emotions, words, and actions are being recorded continuously by the angels appointed by Allah. These angels are assigned the task of acquiring the data for both the good and the bad deeds. They are honorable and kind. They record the deeds with perfect integrity. Data Storage After death, the data of deeds thus acquired is transferred to a memory bank or storage as per the Holy Quran. Surah 83, Ayah 7. Nay, surely the record of the wicked is preserved in Sijin. 8. And what will explain to you what Sijin is? 9. There is a register, fully inscribed. 18. 
Nay, verily, the record of the righteous is preserved in Ilium. 19. And what will explain to you what Ilium is? 20. There is a register, fully inscribed. It is further stated in the Koran that the preserved files of each soul are well guarded. The great storage system does exist, and all things have been preserved. The records of trillions and trillions of souls during their lifetimes on earth are preserved in these registers. What do these registers look like? We do not know. The capability and capacity of this system is beyond our imagination. The universe of which Earth is an extremely small fragment has been created for a specific period of time. All of the heavenly bodies, including the Earth, will come to an end. The termination of the present creation starts the process of the last day or the day of judgment. All creations, visible or invisible to us, will be terminated by the command of Allah, with the exception of those he would like to continue. The process of termination is not haphazard. It has been scheduled in a systematic manner. A dreadful sound or an alarming sound like that of a trumpet has been associated with the collapse of all that is in the heavens and the earth, as per the Holy Koran. However, this does not mean that the sound will terminate life. It is just an alarm. The heavenly bodies, like suns, planets, stars, galaxies, will be torn apart. This chaos in space will be so dreadful that the sky will look like a red ointment or a molten brass. The Quran describes the scenes of destruction extensively. We are presenting a few ayahs here. Surah 69, Ayah 13. Then when one blast is sounded on the trumpet, 14, and the earth is moved and its mountains, and they are crushed in powder at one stroke, 15, on that day shall the great event come to pass. Surah 81, Ayah 1. When the sun with its spacious light is folded up, 2. When the stars fall, losing their luster. 3. When the mountains vanish like a mirage. 6. When the oceans boil over with a swell. Surah 99, Ayahs 1 through 8. When earth is shaken in her final quaking, and earth throws forth her burdens, and every man says, What is happening to her? On that day she will report her news which your Lord has inspired her with. On that day men will appear in droves to be shown their actions. And whoever has done an atom's weight of good will see it, while whoever has done an atom's weight of evil will see it. Resurrection is the next milestone after the present creation is terminated. It is an essential part of the Muslim belief. The trumpet sound is heard the second time. All the dead people from Prophet Adam to the last day will be brought back to life, and this process is known as resurrection. This is one of the life sequences of the human being, and it is inevitable. Throughout history, people have wondered how the people who died a million years ago could be brought back to life. Once again, let's go back to the relativity of time. For Allah, millions of years do not mean much. Man's body after death goes back to earth and gets absorbed into it. If Allah can create human beings and then give them death, is it not easy for him to recreate or reassemble the body and give life again? He has the power to do anything. There are several statements in the Quran about resurrection. Surah 50, 42. The day when they will hear a mighty blast in very truth, that will be the day of resurrection. Surah 75, Ayah 3. Does man think that we cannot assemble his bones? For, nay, we are able to put together in perfect order the very tips of his fingers. The purpose behind the resurrection is to compensate for our earthly deeds with perfect justice. Will we be raised back to life with our body? This question has been asked by all. 
The Quranic statements discuss the recombination of the body for resurrection. Hadith also explains this phenomenon. Narrated Abu Huraira, the Prophet said, Between the two blowings of the trumpet, there will be forty. The people said, O oh, Abu Huraira, forty days? I refused to reply. They said, Forty years? I refused to reply and added, Everything of the human body will decay, except the Cossack's bone of the tail, and from that bone Allah will reconstruct the whole body. Sahih al-Bukhari, Volume 6, Number 338 From this hadith, it must be noted that there is time interval between the first trumpet sound when all creations are destroyed, and the second trumpet sound when the resurrection occurs. How long is this time interval? It is not clear. It could be a long period or a short period. Number 337. Narrated Abu Huraira. The Prophet said, I will be the first to raise my head after the second blowing of the trumpet, and will see Moses hanging the throne. And I will not know whether he had been in that state all the time, or after the blowing of the trumpet. Sahih al-Bukhari. It is generally believed that we will be raised back to life with our bodies. However, what happens to our body system in the new creation is not known to us at this time. Only Allah knows, who has the infinite knowledge and power. The earth will be changed to a different earth, and the heavens will also be changed to different heavens. What will these new creations look like? We do not know. One day the earth will be changed to a different earth, and so will be the heavens, and men will be marshaled forth before Allah, the One, the Irresistible. The trillions and trillions of souls will be assembled on this day. This will be a huge assembly. The new creation will be different from the world that we know now, and our life will be eternal in the new world. It is impossible to have a concept of the new creation in our present life on earth. However, Islam describes the characteristics of the new world with symbols and metaphors. In computer systems, data retrieval brings back or recovers the information in its original form from the storage or memory system. The information is displayed on the screen or printed on the paper. All the data of our deeds will be retrieved from the registers after resurrection so that we see and acknowledge what each one of us did during our lifetime on Earth. It will be like playing a videotape which shows our deeds in real action. What an amazing book or recording is this. It leaves out nothing small or great, but takes account thereof. They will find all that they did placed before them, and not one will your Lord treat with injustice. The Holy Quran, Surah 18, Ayah 49. Allah does not need the data retrieval for himself. He already knows everything from his infinite knowledge. Our deeds are displayed before us for our own acknowledgement before he pronounces the judgment. This is his finest judicial procedure. In this world, one can hide the deeds, but on the day of judgment, deeds are in the open and cannot be hidden. That day shall we set a seal on their mouths, but their hands will speak to us, and their feet bear witness to all that they did. Quran, Surah 36, Ayah 65. When those come to you who believe in our signs, say, Peace be unto you. Your Lord has inscribed for himself the rule of mercy. Verily, if any of you did evil in ignorance, and thereafter repented and amended his conduct, lo, he is oft forgiving, most merciful. Quran, Surah 6, Ayah 54. The recording system during our life on earth records our repentance also along with our sins and good deeds. Allah may forgive the sins of a person who repents. However, repentance after death or on the day of judgment is not accepted. Repentance is valid only till the moment of death.
how will justice be done on the day of judgment? There will be people who did both good deeds and bad deeds while they were on earth. What is the criteria of justice for these people? This question is very well answered in the Holy Quran. We shall set up scales for justice on resurrection day, and no soul will be dealt with unjustly in any way. Even if the weight of a mustard seed should exist, we would bring it along. Sufficient are we as reckoners. Quran Surah 21, Ayah 47. From this statement, we can understand that each deed has a weight. The example of a weighing balance has been given to weigh all our good deeds and the bad deeds. Any deed as small as an atom's weight will be weighed. Such is the accuracy of the judgment procedure. Among the good deeds, there are both light and heavy deeds. Among the bad deeds, there are light and heavy deeds. It seems there will be a matrix of deed names with their weights. Then he whose balance of good deeds will be found heavy will be in a life of good pleasure and satisfaction. But he whose balance of good deeds will be found light will have his home in a bottomless pit. And what will explain to you what this is? It is a fire blazing fiercely. Surah 101, Ayah 6 through 11, the Quran. What deeds are heavy and what deeds are light? Our intents and actions are so many in number it is extremely difficult to make a tabulation of deeds. Only Allah knows the weights of these deeds. However, we can project the relative weights of some of the deeds we know. For example, the five pillars of Islam. 1. Faith in one God and Muhammad as his last messenger. 2. Five times a day prayers. 3. Fasting in Ramadan. 4. Charity, zakah. 5. Pilgrimage to Mecca are considered deeds with very heavy weight. Muslim Brotherhood, unity, helping Muslims who are crying for help, are very heavy good deeds. There are other numerous good deeds like marrying, raising a family, building a mosque, doing justice, education, and so on. Saying Assalamu Alaikum is a simple good deed and has its own weight. Now let us look at some bad deeds. Shirk, worshipping more than one God, adding partners to God, is the greatest sin in Islam. It has the highest weight which may topple or offset the weight of all the good deeds. Interest transactions, adultery, cheating in business, murder, mischief, stealing, changing the religion of Islam or distorting it, rejecting Allah, and so on, have heavy weights. These weights, if added up, may offset the balance of good deeds. However, it must be noted that the final judgment is up to him. He would forgive anyone he pleases. But we must not take any chances. We must pray for his forgiveness. It is important to note that the following hadith clarifies that Allah's mercy is the final step for salvation. Sahih Muslim, Volume 4, 6761. Abu Harara reported Allah's messenger, peace be upon him, as saying, there is none whose deeds alone would entitle him to get into paradise. It was said to him, Allah's messenger, not even you? Thereupon he said, not even, I but that my Lord wraps me in mercy. Sorting On a mighty day, a day when all mankind will stand before the Lord of the worlds, Quran Surah 83, the people will be sorted into three categories on the day of judgment as per the Holy Quran. 1. The companions of the right hand. These are righteous people who will be happy. 2. The companions of the left hand. These are the evildoers who will be in great agony. 3. Those foremost in faith. They will be the nearest to Allah. The Holy Quran further states, Anyone who is given his book in his right hand will be called to account with an easy reckoning and return joyfully to his people while anyone who has given his book behind his back will appeal to be blotted out and will roast in the blaze. The judgment for each soul will be rendered by Allah only. However, after judgment is rendered to the sinners for hell, an appeal procedure will be adopted before Allah to forgive the sinners who basically believed in him as one and only God with no partners. This procedure is known as intercession, 
As you may know, intercession will be done only on the Day of Judgment, after the judgment is given by the Almighty. Allah would have granted permission to some whose statements were acceptable to him. Who will be the intercessor for the Muslim sinners? The Hadith answers this question very well. Allah's Apostle said, They will come to me, and I will ask my Lord's permission. And when I see him, I will fall down in prostration to him. And he will leave me in that state as long as he will. And then I will be addressed. Raise up your head, O Muhammad. Ask and your request will be granted say, and your saying will be listened to. Intercede, and your intercession will be accepted. Then I will raise my head, and I will glorify and praise my Lord. With invocation he will teach me, and then I will intercede. Allah will fix a limit for me, only a certain type of people for whom I can intercede. And I will take them out of the hellfire, and let them enter paradise. Sahih al-Bukhari, Volume 6, Hadith 3 Please see the Hadith book for the complete Hadith. It is quite inspiring. The Hadith finally states that Prophet Muhammad's intercession will occur four times when all will be removed from hell, with the exception of those whom the Quran has imprisoned therein. This means the judgment is only by Allah and no one else. Some Muslims may stay in hell for some time, and then they may be transferred to paradise. The deeds of anyone are not transferable. We will stand on our own, and we will be entirely responsible for our own deeds. No father, no mother, no relatives, and no friends will come to our help. The final home is eternal. There is no aging, there is no death. There ends our journey. Allah sent us on the earth on a test program. Those who passed his test enter paradise, and those who did not pass the test enter hell. It is impossible to find out what it will really look like in paradise or hell. The Holy Quran describes the contents of paradise and hell in a metaphorical language or symbolic language. The dimensions and characteristics of the eternal home are described to us in the earth language to make us sense what it will be like. The subjects are depicted by earthly subjects known to us and which bear similarities. Righteous people will be near Allah, but they will never be equal to Allah. This is not a cycle of evolution. Human life has a sequence of events prescribed by Allah. The dimensions of paradise and hell are highly magnified and enhanced. The eternal home may be bigger than the entire universe. As per Hadith in Sahih Muslim, there is a tree in paradise. To cross the shade of the tree, it may take more than one hundred years. It has been written in Hadith that when a person is entering paradise, a beautiful woman with large eyes will greet and welcome him by shaking hands with him. If one of her fingers is shown on the earth dimensions, it will shine like the sun. If her hair is shown on earth, it will cover the east and the west. The Holy Quran describes paradise as a home of peace, security, with no death, no fatigue. The gardens of eternity will have rivers flowing. The people of paradise will be reclining on thrones of dignity with their associates under the cool shades. Beside them will be chaste women. Every fruit will be there for them. They will have anything they call for. In paradise, people will meet their relatives who also were righteous. The people of paradise will see angels surrounding the throne of Allah and singing glory and praise to him. There is everlasting bliss. It is written in Hadith that Allah will never be annoyed with the people of paradise. There would be a tent made of a pearl whose height would be sixty miles. The people will live in great mansions with the finest foods. They will eat and drink, but would neither spit, nor pass water, nor avoid excrement, nor suffer Qatar. The Hadith mentions that the residents of Paradise will look to the upper apartment of Paradise as you see the planets in the sky. It has also been reported in a Hadith, Sahih Muslim, there will be bounties which the eye has not seen and the ear has not heard and no human heart has ever perceived them. The people of hell will be in great misery and pain. Those who reject our signs we shall soon cast into the fire, 
As often as their skins are roasted through, we shall change them for fresh skins, that they may taste the penalty. For Allah is exalted in power, wise. Quran, Surah 4, Ayah 56. Hellfire has been frequently stated in the noble Quran for the people of hell. The fire cannot be endured, nor will it leave the person. Death will come to them, but they will not die. Their faces and garments will be covered with fire. They will drink boiling water and will be in the shades of black smoke. Hell is guarded by nineteen angels. Hypocrites will be at the bottom of hell, the most ferocious location. There are seven gates to hell. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be unto him, said, The fire which the sons of Adam would burn is only one-seventieth part of the fire of hell. This statement clearly indicates how fierce hell is. Paradise is the final home for the righteous, and hell is the final home for the rejecters of Allah. All the teachings in Islam converge toward the last day, or the day of judgment. It is a formula which will take us to the final salvation, if we apply it in our life on this planet Earth. Time once gone will never come back. To conclude this presentation, let us pray. O oh Allah, save us from the misery of this world, save us from the torment of death, and save us from hellfire on the day of judgment. O oh Allah, forgive our sins with your mercy, and admit us into paradise, the final home of eternity filled with your blessings, the home of peace, the home of security, and the home of happiness. Amen.